What's up? My name's John, and this is the result of my disease called skateboarding. Well, should I do another one? Yeah. Without the dog? Alright. What's up? My name's John, and this is the result of my disease called skateboarding. Yeah, I didn't start skating until 99, um, which is pretty late because a lot of my collection is from the early 90s, mid 90s. Yeah, so when I was a kid, I was just like skating a lot. I never like thought to actually save anything. I would just like ride a board until it had like crazy razor tail and I would just focus it and like throw it in the pile. But like, I think it was like 2015. My girlfriend at the time, my wife now, actually bought me a, um, an original Chad Muska silhouette board from like 97. And like, I remember getting it and it was like, wow, this like feels really good. Like it just brought back so many memories and all the nostalgia. And I actually had already been collecting uh, VHS tapes because I've always been a big just video nerd. So I've always been collecting VHS tapes, but like I never thought to actually collect boards. I didn't really want to get into that at the time because like I didn't have the room for it, first of all. And they're also like way more expensive than VHS tapes. But when she gave me the Muska silhouette, I was like, oh, this like feels really cool. This is like, oh, this like totally brought me back to my childhood. That just kind of sparked the whole thing. Um, after that, she actually got me a second one. She got me a... Um, 10th anniversary girl, yeah, right board. It was signed by the whole girl team and like Spike Jones and everything. So I was like, man, this is like really sick. And I, I just like, that just started the whole thing. I just went off from there. It was like, got uncontrollable. And then that's when I discovered um, Tim, Bob Shirt, and Decade. And I started going to the shows. It was just so inspiring. And like, I just like fell right into it. Yeah, my wife and I just found this spot like a couple years ago. and. I remember walking into this place and being like, just seeing this empty wall. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a board wall. Like, she doesn't know it yet, but it's, <laughs> I'm gonna have a big board wall here and eventually got this set up. But it's kind of like color coded too, like down here. I'll just go left to right. We got the Chad Vote Evil Slick. Super sick, I love this graphic. I don't know who did the art for that. Um, Eric Ricks for Think. Um, this is kind of like a football shape. I love like old think art. It's, I don't know who did the art for this. I think it was John Keister. I could be wrong, but uh, I love that one. And this is an early uh, firm board uh, signed by Lance Mountain. I love that. I, I love like the 90s graphics that are so simple and like centered and like, like neat. Love that. Now, uh, do you mind that that one's signed on the bottom? Is that usually something you would uh, try and avoid? In this case, it's okay because like he signed it in a place where there's no graphic. Like there's a lot of dead space on this board, so it, this one's okay. But yeah, usually I like like them to sign the top. Um, it just doesn't like get in the way of the art. Um, but I mean, it's Lance Mountain too. Like I, he can sign it wherever. He could have signed it on the baby's head. And it would be cool. Um, this next one is Ricky Higgins for uh, Clean. You don't see many clean boards. This is pretty rare. Um, I don't know what this is a bite of. It look, kind of looks like a cigar, would you say? I love the colors too on this one. It's, I, I, like, I don't really like bright colors. I like more like earthy kind of dark colors. Um, this is a Mike Fraser stereo. But actually I have the original art right here. I got that with the board. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to track the art down. Super stoked on that. I was always a big fan of Mike Frazier. I know he's like a vert guy, like people don't, people hit the vert button, you know, but like I met him at Woodward. I actually got to go to Woodward in uh, 2006, got to meet Mike and he was super nice. He, he was doing a vert demo actually, super cool guy. And he was, he was always kind of like, in my eyes, he's like the, the cooler vert guy. Like he was super technical, like technical lip tricks. Like he, he wasn't doing like 720s and McTwist and stuff. Big, big fan of Mike and, and stereo too. I love stereo stuff. Andy Stone. For Element, love Andy Stone. He, he was a sick skater uh, out of DC. It's a good one, yeah. It's not Underworld Element. I don't know when they switched over to Element. It's probably a rip from something. It looks like it. I don't. I don't know what it is. Do you? No. You recognize that? Next we have the. Uh, this is another one. It's very 90s. The Chico Chocolate. I wasn't sure like if it was a Chico for a while. Like some people thought it was some another skater's pro model, but I think it is a Chico. Um, it doesn't have his name on it, or or it doesn't say chocolate or Chico or anything. It's just art. I feel like that. I love boards like that. It's very 90s. It's all about the graphic and not about anything else. Kind of miss that. I wish people would do that more. This is crazy. This is Gabriel Rodriguez's first board on chocolate. Insane. 
rest in peace. He's one of the greatest of all time. Love Gabe. I'm stoked to have that. It's insane. James Kelch for real. He had an ad on this board actually um, doing the ollie over the bar in SF. I, I love having boards that you can like have, like there's an ad with them and you kind of put them together. It's pretty sick because it's like not only was this is this an original James Kelch for real, but he it was like documented in an ad. I love that. Matt Schnur, Planet Earth. Love this graphic. This board is small too. I don't know what that is. We should measure that. Like, that's 7.5. It looks smaller though. Well, that Kelch must be big, right? Kelch is like... Seven, is that eight? Eight, yeah. This is insane. This is one of Kalis's first boards on Workshop. Uh, Neil Blender did the graphic. I don't know what to say about it. It's, I'm super stoked to have this. This came from Australia. It's just like a beautiful board. Like Again, like a lot of early 90s stuff, mid 90s stuff. It's just like the graphics were so nice. This is Papalaro's first board on Alien. Two aliens next to each other. That's a Don Pendleton graphic. That's a little bit later. I think uh, this came from Australia as well. And the guy that I got it from got it from Papalardo. And I think... I think this was his like only board that he had of his first pro model. I, I hope not. I hope he still has one, but um, he signed it too. This one he signed. I don't know. I, I'd rather have him sign this one on the top, but it's cool. I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. Um, we have another alien right here. This is Fred Gall's uh, Holland flower board. This is kind of an iconic alien board, especially for Fred. Uh, they actually reissued this a couple years ago. The reissue looks a lot different than this one though. Like this, my co the reissue is like, has, has like darker colors, like they're more saturated. I don't know, maybe mine is like sun faded or something, but it, the reissue just, it looks way different. I, I hate, I don't like when they do that. Like I, when they reissue something, I feel like they should reissue it and like make it the same, you know what I mean? But I don't know, it's on a modern, more modern shape too, like wider board, more square nose. Um, I don't know, I, I wish they would reissue it on the same shape that they made back in the day, but maybe it probably doesn't sell as good. Um, I'm stoked to have this. This came from Fred's personal collection too. Actually, there was one collector in between I got it from, but he got it from Fred, so I'm stoked to have that. I don't do this for the money or anything like that. I do it for the, the history of it. Like, I just love collecting this stuff and like giving it a good home and, and preserving the history where like a lot of these boards didn't come from good homes. Like I feel like they were ne neglected or like people would forget them, forget about them eventually or like, I don't know, they would lose them or... So I kind of feel like this obligation almost to like save this stuff because it's just super important. Like the, the 90s were like, that was such a special time in skating and like it'll, it'll unfortunately never ha be like that again. It's just how it is, but uh, we got to take care of this stuff. And I'm, that's why like, I like people who collect because they, they they're preserving the history. This one's kind of random. Jeff Taylor rhythm board. It's very random. <laughs> I, I don't know who did the art for this either. I wish I knew, but uh, love that one. I love the graphic. Although it's kind of weird because like you see both sides of the cello, which doesn't make sense. It's almost like it's folded in. But uh, I love this graphic. I, I love the colors. Again, like more earthy, dark colors. The... Uh, the separate screens for this must look really weird. You know what I mean? Finally, the Geno 101 Panther board, not as graphic. Super stoked to have this. This is probably one of my favorite boards in my collection. Uh, actually, one of the first boards I got when I started collecting just kind of like fell in my lap. I got this from Australia as well. There's a lot of collectors in Australia for some reason. I love the stain on this one too. Like I know of a, there's a natural wood stain, there's a green one, and there's also an orange one. But I, I love the uh, purplish stain. It like just goes with the graphics so good. Um, so these are kind of like the main boards that I have in the in the kitchen here. Uh, it's kind of like my own art show. Like I feel, I feel like Scoot said it on his interview. Like it just when I wake up every morning and I go look at these boards, like it just kind of like makes me feel good. Like I just like I just love looking at this stuff. I love having it and like it just makes me so stoked. You know what I mean? Especially because I'm, I'm not like in the skating scene a lot anymore so just kind of like this is kind of like how i get involved in skating these days like i'm just i just collect and like i just love having all this stuff
Yeah, so I was always kind of like interested in like how people keep their collections. Like um, some people just keep them in like, some people just keep them like stacked up on the floor. Some people like have them in boxes. Like Tim has his whole like wall of boards, but he has them in boxes so he can like take them out easily. Um, have you ever seen uh, Raiders of the Lost Archives? Yes. Um, that series that Skateboarder did. Um, I really like Nick Halkius's collection. He like keeps them like stacked vertical, um, but they're kind of like, they're not closed in. So you can kind of like flip through them. And I think that's pretty cool. Like Mitch has actually. Yeah. Same thing. That's where I think Mitch got the idea. Yeah, so I kind of had that idea, um, but I was like, well, what if I can make like a box and like, close the lid and like keep them stored in one place kind of thing. So I kind of, I came up with the idea for this and then my dad actually built this for me because he's like super good at woodworking and stuff like that. So I had actually like, he, he did it and I drove up state to, uh, to pick it up and I didn't take into consideration like me getting it in my car. And <laughs> I went to like slide this in my like little sedan that I have and like, I seriously had like a quarter inch wiggle room on, on one side. It was like, it just barely fit in there. It was like meant to be. So yeah, I, this is where I keep most of my boards. And also when I like came up with this idea, um, I was like, okay, this is gonna be like my limit to collecting. Like as soon as this fills up, it's like, I'm done. Like I can't get any more. And then of course that like went out of the window, like it filled up really fast and now it's like overflowing. So, <laughs> but that was the concept initially. Um, I guess we could start digging into this stuff. This is another Andy Stone element. Um, I th again, I think this was like 94, 95. Uh, it wasn't Underworld anymore, it was just element. But I, I love, again, like I love the, the, like the 90s graphics. It's very just like simple, symmetrical, like in the middle, a lot, lot of dead space, thin. No, I'm not, I'm not a Days and Confused fan. I am an Andy Stone fan though. Yeah. Like I love the whole DC scene from the mid nineties and psyched to have this. I actually got this recently, like probably a month ago. I had always known about it, but I was like never, I also love the red top. The red top and the blue bottom like looks so good together. Ronnie Bertino for 23, crazy. A lot of people love this graphic. Um, honestly, like I'm a big Ronnie Bertino fan, but this isn't my favorite graphic. There, a lot of 23 boards are more like cartoony, which is cool, but like, I, I still love this board, don't get me wrong, but super psyched to have this. Um, this is a very early Jerry Fowler board. I got this off of Jerry. Um, That's his first board. This is not his first board. I think this is second or third, maybe. Um, again, there's no name on it. <laughs> it's just like a dog taking a shit. Um, he actually signed the top for me, which was very nice of him. I actually asked him the other day, I was like, what does Le Jane mean? Like, Le Jane, like, what is that? And he's like, oh, that, that was a girl, girl's name that I used to date. Like, they just put that on your top logo, like, right next to your name. It's kind of random, but I feel like that's very, that's very Ed Templeton-like to do that. It's like, put, like, his girlfriend's name on there. Um, there's, like, nothing in here. It's, like, an empty frame. It's kind of cool. He, like, matched the smiley face. So Jerry found this graphic originally for his first board. Um, I think this was like 1993, but actually um, in 1994, um, Alfonso Rawls actually came out with the, a board with the same graphic. And I, I didn't know that. Uh, I found it like online and I was like, wait a second, like did he, he must have taken the graphic from Jerry or like maybe there were like, some people say there were like, um, like slick skins left over that they used, but like Toy Machine and H Street it, Alf's board was for H Street, but like, I don't know if they had a connection or like, it just seems pretty random. Very random. Um, but if you look, if you look up on the, on, online, you can find Alf's version of this, but it's like, it's also a different, it's a completely di different shape too. So I'm not sure what the story is behind that, but I thought that was an interesting thought. Yeah. Fred Gall, Alien Workshop. Super psyched to have this. This is like time code era. Um, you don't see a lot of early Fred Galls, and I'm, I'm, I've been fortunate enough to have, I have a couple of them. I have the uh, Holland Flower, and then I have this one. Um, I love this graphic, it's super sick. 
I love how like the, the G is in the blue and then the, the rest of it's in the other color. Like, it just looks really nice. I, I love it. Like the castle, I don't know what, what the graphic is called, but it's like a, I call it like the castle board. Uh, no, no top graphic. Orange stain, love this one. Time code is like, yeah. that's probably one of my favorite eras actually. Um, Robbie Ganjemi for vehicle. Yeah, I just got this from Mike Stein. Thank you, Mike. Obviously, like, big East Coast influence right here. He used to ride for Zoo York, but then he started this company called Vehicle. Not a lot of people know about Vehicle, I feel like, or maybe care, but I, it's definitely, like, has a deep place in uh, skate history. Not only New York, but Boston, too. I used to have another one. It was, like, it was like the whole thing was um, natural top. But this one, I, I like this gra graphic better. Actually, somebody told me after I sold the natural one, uh, somebody told me that that was the first run of vehicle boards. I didn't know that, but I like this graphic. I like this one better, I think, so I'm psyched to have this. It is a Tim Gavin, right? Tim Gavin for girl. Love this one. Again, very 90s. There's no name on it or anything. It's just, a, it's just all about the art. Very simple. Just a guy on a canoe. It's cool. Um, this is an early one too. I'm, I don't know, maybe it's probably like 94. Um, girl lo top logo. This, this changed too. Like this one, the head is poking through the top. I think um, on the Andy Jenkins Bob shirt interview too, they were talking about like how the, the shape of the girl changed over time. Like I think it was like, like the crotch was like curved at one point and, and it was flat another time. So. It kind of change. It kind of has morphed over time. Yellow top. Not not a big fan, but it's cool. This is very like the surface is very like smooth too. I don't know what they did different about this, but it's like the finish feels like dense. You know what I mean? This was like the the uh, sister company to Neighborhood. Um, this is probably one of the smallest boards I own. This is things tiny. I, I love I love the graphic. It's sick. It's I love I love the neighborhood boards, our uh, videos. It's just such a sick time. Like lots of great skateboarding, but these guys were kind of like underground. They were, it was kind of like menace. Like it was a different set of guys. Um, so I, I had a couple neighborhood boards at one point, and then I was like, oh, I gotta I gotta get like an S special board too. Kind of like go with it. And I found this one. Um, stoked to have this. I. I think there might be a different colorway of this same board too. Like this is the blue one, but I think there's another one out there somewhere. Um, this one's kind of random. Foundation Melvin's board. I love Foundation. I grew up on Foundation videos like Art Bars and uh, That's Life. And I also love the Melvins, one of my favorite bands. So like when I saw this, I had to grab it. And this is when they were still calling it Foundation Superco. I think like they dropped that eventually, it was just Foundation Skateboards, but the early ones had said Foundation Superco. Um, I don't know if this was, was anyone's pro model. Not that I know of. I actually tried to contact um, Todd, Swank. Todd Swank and I, I couldn't get a hold of him, but I would love to know the story behind this graphic because this is not an album cover as far as I know. Like I, I looked up all the album covers. It, this is like a, I think this is just like a Melvins-esque type graphic. Um, but I, I love this board, it's super sick. Random, uh, but I'll keep this for a long time. I know uh, we're like unearthing these gems, but <sighs> I think this is maybe Ryan Hickey's second board on Zoo, if not his first one, I'm not sure, but um, I was lucky enough to get this off Dan Fio, who also lives here on Long Island. Um, he sold this to me, really sick. Years later, I saw somebody selling it for like 35 bucks. I was like, dude, I need this thing. And he actually used to work at Chapman. Um, and he's the one that actually painted this back in the day. Um, I found out that he actually got this from somebody else. This wasn't actually the one that he saved from back in the day. I don't think he saved one, but he actually ended up finding it again, um, which was cool. Um, he spray painted this, right? Yeah. He's by hand. So that's super cool, man. Thank you, Dan. This is awesome. It's in good hands. And the uh, simple Zoo York top logo. I think they did this for a lot of the early zoo. So this is probably like one of my favorite boards in my collection. I feel like I say that a lot, but like I have a lot of favorites for different reasons. But this is an original Keith Huffnagel fun board. 
Um, Fun was a, a short-lived company that was run by Ron Allen. He used to run Life skateboards, and then that turned into Fun. And uh, he had Huff on there. Um, Keenan was on there. I think he, I think Keenan actually turned pro for Fun, but I've never seen. Actually, I have seen a, a, a Keenan Fun board, but I, I think somebody focused it. It's like broken in half. This is insane. It, it's a slick, uh, bigger shape. Um, I'm super grateful to have that. I actually found, an, I had found another one before, but um, it had like indented truck marks on it. And then I found this one, it was a little cleaner. I've only ever seen the two of them, but this is the cleaner of, of the two. And uh, I eventually got this and then sold the other one. And then this is a photo that Retta took of Huff in uh, Battery Park. And they were selling these photos, uh, well, they were selling um, some photos at the, De the Decade Show in Albany. And I actually wanted a, um, I wanted the Harold Hunter, him like sketching the taxi in New York with like the Twin Towers in the background. I love that photo, it's like so iconic, but um, somebody beat me to it. And, uh, but I was able to get this Huff photo and I didn't realize like when I brought it home, I like, I had it like next to the board and I was like, oh, this kind of like fits with like with the sunset and everything, like it looks perfect, like it was meant to be. So I'm super grateful to have this. Uh, rest in peace, Keith Huffnagel, like one of the greatest to ever do it. Uh, Greg Hunt for Stereo. A lot of people know Greg Hunt as a filmer, but he did ride for Stereo back in the day. He was a skater. Um, and these are slides from uh, Tommy Guerrero has a, an album out, like a music album. And these are like slides from the album cover, Shoot, which is pretty sick. Greg Hunt for Stereo, you don't see many of these. Um, stereo, Stereo, Stereo. Like Baker, Baker, Baker. Baker, Baker, Baker. <laughs> I like the purple top on this one. This one's like fatter shape too. This is like a big board. I think, especially for back then. So this is like, this might be a little controversial, but like this is pretty crazy. This is actually a, um, a letter that Lenny Kirk wrote in jail. Like, not to anybody specific, but just about Jesus and stuff. Like when he was all Jesus crazy. It's kind of creepy to have this, but like it's, it's cool too, like Lenny is definitely a part of skate history for sure and like had a very interesting path. I don't know if you want to zoom in on that, but. Lenny Kirk. Ask Jesus to forgive your sins always. Pray always, get to know the Lord. Study and obey the Bible. Quit sinning, escape hell. I don't, I don't know much about this. I heard he wrote this in jail. I could be wrong. Don't be afraid. Love the Lord. Lenny Kirk. You'll never escape the flames of hell. He says that in time code. Escape hell. Escape hell. <laughs> 